I'm Becca. And I'm Matt, and this is your Tech News Update. This week we look at Twitter fiction, a rogue geoengineer, and a morphing hexapod. But first, heart control through music. That's right. Researchers at the University of Virginia in Charlottesville are working on an iPhone app that aims to control your heart through music. It's an exercise aid that chooses the music to suit the exercise that you are doing. So it will play fast music to get your heart up to speed while you're running and slower paced music when it's time to cool off a little. It monitors your heart and also gradually learns what music gets you going and what doesn't. The research was presented at the Census Conference in Canada last week. If you have trouble expressing yourself in 140 characters, imagine trying to tell a story that way. Twitter has announced the first Twitter Fiction Festival, which starts on November the 28th for five days. The company is looking for new creative ideas on how Twitter can be used in fiction. While Twitter seems about the worst possible medium for writing stories, even short ones, the folks at Twitter are still hoping somebody will find a new way to use it, perhaps through collaboration, live chatting or improvisation. We'll be able to see the results soon. Just look out for the hashtag TwitterFiction. Talking of fiction, this story sounds like it could be a science fiction story. A rich American businessman becomes an amateur geoengineer and tricks naive islanders into creating a plankton bloom visible from space. But it's all true. Russ George created the controversial project as an experiment to take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. The idea was to dump 100 tonnes of iron sulphate into the ocean of the coast of Canada near the Haida Gwaii Islands. This would fertilise the plankton and create a bloom, which would absorb huge amounts of carbon dioxide. When the plankton then died, it would sink to the bottom, taking the carbon dioxide with it, and that's exactly what he did. However, he did it by telling the islanders it was a salmon enhancement project, not a geoengineering project with potentially terrible side effects. The islanders even put almost a million dollars of their own money into the project. The resulting plankton bloom covered 10,000 square kilometres and was visible from space, which brought it to the attention of the Canadian authorities and the United Nations, both of whom have ruled against this scale of experiment. Rush George defended his experiment, saying, if somebody doesn't step forward to save the oceans, it'll be too late. We all love a hexapod around here. The Morphex is a cut above, though. Not only does the six-legged robot scurry around, it can also fold its legs and morph into a ball. Once curled up, it can then kick out its legs one by one to roll around the floor. At the moment, the rolling is a little off kilter, but Zenta, the designer of Morphex, is planning a better, balanced version that will roll straighter. That's all we've got time for. Thanks for watching.